March 28th, turn up. Wellington Boots, Billy Boots, Galoshes. By any name, rubber rain boots owe their existence to a 19th century American, Charles Goodyear. He invented the vulcanization process, a way of keeping natural rubber from deteriorating. Nowadays, rain boots are made from a synthetic material called thermoplastic rubber, or TPR. They're functional, even fashionable. Making rubber boots begins with spools of polyester yarn for their lining. A colored spool adds a thin line of color to indicate the foot size of the lining. A computer-programmed machine crochets the yarn with 242 needles. As we can see in slow motion, each gate opens completely, then closes on the yarn. The needles rotate 750 times per second. They can program the machine to make linings for any size of boot. For quality control, workers spot check a few linings from every batch. Now the action moves to this automated injection molding machine with six stations. Each one produces a pair of boots. Workers carefully roll a pair of linings onto each station's foot form, called the last. These lasts will create the space inside the boot for the lower leg and foot. A five-part boot mold closes around the foot last. Then a high-pressure injection screw pushes in melted synthetic rubber, first in the soles, then in the upper boot. The company lab regularly tests samples of the synthetic rubber pellets that feed the injection machine to make sure they melt and flow well. The lab technician pours in some pellets, melts them, then pushes in a piston to extrude the molten rubber. The machine measures what's called the melt flow index. Back on the factory floor, a large suction hose feeds rubber pellets to the injectors. Black for the boot body, red for the soles. And at this factory, nothing goes to waste. It recycles rubber leftovers or rejects of all colors into a batch of black rubber. The suction hose then sends the pellets into a hopper, which feeds the barrel of the injection unit. The heater bands inside the barrels melt the pellets at 200 degrees Celsius. Then at the precise moment the mold arrives, the injector shoots in the molten rubber. Giant clamps apply pressure for about 10 seconds, then release. A hydraulic cylinder pushes up the last, helping to extract the boots. Then it's quickly on with new linings for the next pair. Total molding time? Just 30 seconds. The boots cool for 45 minutes, then head off to packaging. Making just one stop along the way at the pad printing machine to get the company's logo. Elsewhere in the factory, a seamstress carefully constructs a patterned boot lining. The factory crochets white linings in a continuous roll, then has another company print on the design. The trickiest part is shaping the toe because she has to curve and cut the material at the same time. For these pattern boots, the machine injects a transparent synthetic rubber into the mold so that the printed lining will show through. The mirror finished surface of the mold cavity produces a high gloss boot. The printed boot requires more work and costlier materials and is therefore more expensive. After the molding, for example, it has to go to the trimming station. There, a worker shaves off excess material from the top of the boot. Then he sews on a fabric binding to sandwich the lining. The factory randomly selects a boot from each batch and puts it through a battery of tests on this flex machine. It bends the boot in various ways some 300,000 times. 
ensuring that these rain boots can walk the walk.